let's kick off a new year of Patreon requests with a classic. I use the term classic very loosely. Then again, when is a movie even considered a classic? What if it has all the classic tropes that a film from its genre would usually have? A genre that has had a lot of stinkers in cinematic history, but this one is popular and can also be enjoyed beyond its typical demographic. Well, it's the proposal. Let me know what you think. You know, this was from 2009. I remember seeing it in theaters. There had been quite a renaissance going on for Sandra Bullock, who also appeared in The Blind Side. She also appeared in All About Steve, but no one ever seems to mention that one or ever saw it. I mean, it won an award. It was a Razzie, but it was an award. I mean, who even pays attention to that stuff? Well, in any case, 12 years later, let's look at the proposal and see if it still holds up to what everyone was thinking back then. As I said before, I saw the proposal in 2009 and remembered liking it. It was funny, it had good characters, and it didn't feel as purposely romanticized as other movies from the time. I think I only ever caught it once when it was in theaters. I can't even remember the last time I thought about it until it was requested on Patreon. So on rewatch, I wasn't expecting much. Look, I love a rom-com. They don't require much investment, and I do have an admiration for the cliches, but it's not my favorite genre. However, all these years later, the proposal still gets the job done. One of the first things I'll mention is the two leads, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. Whereas a lot of Hollywood pictures often have a much older male in a relationship with a younger woman, which the audience is ignoring for some reason, here's a case where they actually had Bullock with someone who was 12 years younger. It doesn't really matter because Bullock herself has aged perfectly so she doesn't look her age at all, but I just thought it was nice that there isn't many jokes about the age difference, even though it's apparent she's older. But also, the attention surrounding the movie at the time never brought this up. It's become an annoyance in Hollywood to make fun of younger men dating older women, while it gets ignored the other way around. So it's nice that a film from 2009 was able to go by without any fingers pointed. The plot is very much like a screwball romantic comedy you'd find in the late 30s and 40s Hollywood. In fact, I recently watched The Philadelphia Story, and while not at all a similar story, I kept thinking back to it because of a plot surrounding a marriage being a sham. A lot of movies from that time had the storyline either about a fake marriage or a character marrying the wrong person. And it's not like other movies haven't done this kind of plot in modern times, but the proposal was a bit more timeless with it. There's not a lot of pop culture references, the main leads do have an interesting comical chemistry, and they're surrounded by the types of family members you'd see in the classics, not tired archetypes. The story has the boss of a major publishing firm use her secretary as a fake fiancé for a fake marriage that will help her to avoid deportation to Canada. The boss then travels to visit the secretary's family as they try their best to keep the charade going. It's a completely ridiculous plot, but like a lot of good rom-coms, it does everything needed to convince you that it's plausible. Sandra Bullock is commanding as Margaret. She's not exactly sinister, but she's enough of a presence to keep the other employees on their toes, which is shown in a comedic way. Luckily, she's never shown as threatening or mean, but just what you'd expect from any sort of stern boss. Luckily, she's never shown as threatening or mean, but just what you'd expect from any sort of stern boss. And very early on, you see that she has some humanity, which helps to make the couple seem more believable by the end. Ryan Reynolds is snarky and sarcastic as Andrew, but plays it professional around the boss. It's pretty weird watching him in this right before he blew up in the roles that he was made for, like Deadpool or Detective Pikachu, but you still already see a lot of what makes the actor's later work so great. I'm not sure what others think, but for me, he manages to be funny and likable even with the wisecracking humor. The rest of the cast is pretty good too, like Craig T. Nelson playing a disagreeing and quiet father, and Mary Steenburgen as Andrew's mother. There's not a time you can't like Mary Steenburgen. I also unofficially consider Book Club a sequel to the proposal, since both of these actors, again, play an older married couple. 
Oscar Nunez is also pretty fun to watch. I didn't think a role like this usually works in modern comedies, but it's a little hilarious to see him pop up numerous times, working as a store clerk, a stripper, a caterer, and finally as the priest. Is anyone else employed in this town? The thing everyone talked about was Betty White. My god, she was on SNL after this, tons of commercials, and I swear there's a cult out there just waiting for any scrap of Betty White news they can get. Of course, I think she's the highlight as well, playing the goofy grandmother who gets some of the best lines and moments. For the most part, it stays humorous and doesn't get too schmaltzy, but like a ton of rom-coms, by the third act, it gets to be a little much and takes things too seriously. These are the parts I usually start to look at my watch, hoping for things to wrap up, but on the bright side, it's not nearly as long of a third act as these tend to get, and the finale isn't so sentimental and cheesy. The end credit sequence is, dare I say, pretty original. I got a laugh out of it. It's certainly enjoyable, but if I really start to dig into it, there's quite a few threads that go nowhere, or things that don't make sense. For instance, it seems like Margaret travels a lot for her job, which is the primary reason why the US caught up with her immigration status. Yet, when she's in Alaska, she acts like she doesn't know how to carry luggage around. There's also a whole issue with Andrew wanting to go into publishing, while his father wants him to take over the family business, but this isn't discussed again either, or at least not to the degree it was originally brought up. Then there's also Andrew's ex-girlfriend in Alaska, but she barely appears. Most of the issues are meant to be magically fixed because Andrew discovers he truly loves Margaret and everyone comes together. I just don't see the point of introducing a lot of this stuff if it wasn't going to be resolved in a natural way. I guess we need more time for the unfunny moments like the tribal dance or the long contrived way that the main leads run into each other naked. That joke feels like a stupid studio note and the writers did their best to make it happen but honestly it was a big trailer moment but it's not really that funny. Otherwise, it's a worthy rom-com that still deserves to be watched today. Everyone involved has better things out there, but it's aged better than a lot of the comedies that came from the late 2000s. However, now I think it's time to watch a real 2009 classic all about Steve, so if I have it on Blu-ray, I'm gonna give it a watch. I feel like that joke would have worked better 12 years ago when people actually knew what All About Steve was. I guess I don't know when I'm ever going to get the chance to talk about All About Steve ever again, but literally, this was a movie that they made in 2007, and then they released it in 2009 because Sandra Bullock was in The Blind Side and in The Proposal. She was on a career high, so they decided to finally finish the movie and release it, and you know, that's not even the only one. Bradley Cooper was also in The Hangover, so they were like, let's cash in on him. And then the movie's released, it gets terrible reviews, and for the poster, they put Ken Jeong on it, even though I'm pretty sure he's barely in the movie. But because he was in The Hangover, and then suddenly he was a noticeable actor, they put him on the poster as if he's one of the main characters. This actually happens a lot in Hollywood, where they'll just, like, finish old movies they never released because they didn't really trust that they could do well, but then suddenly one of the actors becomes popular and then they're like, hey, release this, people will think it was made this year, you know, everyone will go see it because they went and saw the other movies. You know, good on Sandra Bullock to go to the Razzie Awards and accept it because that's still one of the funniest things that ever happened in Hollywood. Um, sorry, this turned into all about Steve territory. Special thanks to Anna for this Patreon request. Thanks for watching the video, and special shout out to Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for the support on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.